Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. and I'm here to talk to you today about the empath archetype. And investigating the empath, I found that the empath is a person that can take on other people's emotions as if they were their own. The empath has two core gifts and the first is to take on the other person's perspective, to envision yourself as the other person, to go through their experiences, to simulate and to say, this is the other person's life, this is what they are thinking, this is what they are experiencing. And then it is the second ability, and that is to take on the other person's emotions and intentions. To feel, this is what the other person is feeling, this is what they want to do, this is what their aims are, this is what they need, and this is what they struggle with. The empath has these core two traits, and in this, they feel often like they are responsible for the other person's life. They go so deep into this simulation, into this experience, that they literally feel like the other person, and that they literally take on the other person's feelings and experiences, and becomes in this preoccupied with helping and asserting themselves and giving the other person what it is they need to live better and to be happier, and to achieve what it is the other person wants to achieve. So the empath is one of the healer archetypes in Jungian archetypes. The healer is the person that spends and devotes them time to helping other people. They feel preoccupied with the experiences of others and with what's happening around them. And they want to use their talents and their experiences to help others. So the healer can be an empath or they can be a doctor, somebody that knows everything about the human body and about medicine and can offer and give people the right medicine. The healer can also be a kind of uh, champion for others or a supporter, somebody that comes and listens to you and does what you, hears, out, hears you out and asks you questions and works together with you to achieve something. The healer can also be a kind of uh, pragmatic, a person that uh, knows and that supplies you with whatever it is you need. If you need money, they give you money. If you need a house, a place to stay, they give you a place to stay. So the empath can have many of these forms and the INFJ and INFPs are the people that tend to gravitate towards this empath role. The empath is the person that uh, using introverted intuition and introverted feeling steps into other people's perspectives and steps into other people's intentions and experiences and their emotional lives. So in this there can be like a sense of almost overfeeling, of hyperfeeling, of being so preoccupied with other people's experiences that you forget your own. And that is often the core issue with the healer archetypes. The healer archetypes have been trained somehow by society or by their upbringing and by their parents to invalidate what they want for themselves. The healers feel that they are somehow not allowed to be selfish, not allowed to want things of their own, not allo allowed to have their own intentions and their own desires, not allowed to pursue their own careers, their own ambitions. And so the healer is preoccupied with giving people what, giving everyone else what everyone else wants. In this, there can be a sense of denying yourself and your own personal experiences and what you want and not recognizing it in yourself at all to begin with. In this, there can be a tendency to hyper-associate with the experiences of others and to go so deeply in others as an effort to escape from your own experiences and from your own desires. That feeling of uh, having own desires and that feeling of shame and guilt over having personal wants and personal needs leading you to and feeding you into putting yourself and pouring your energy into other people. Every time you want something, giving up and not going for that and not daring to speak out for it and instead focusing on what other people need. And in this, a lot of healers feel like they are constantly pouring energy into other people. And in this, there's a trend in psychology called overcompensation. You know, in over overcompensation is when you, there is something that uh, you struggle with, but you don't want to recognize it. So what you do is you try to do other things to make up for it. Yeah, I can't do this, but at least I'm doing this, so at least I'm doing something right. And in this, there is a tendency in empaths to almost feel like they have been given a special gift or a special divine mission that their empathy is so important that their feeling is so important that what they are doing is so important and that nobody else can do it 
I am the only person that can do this. I'm the only person that understands. I'm the only person that can feel this level of empathy. And so I need to completely devote myself to this feeling and to this mission. I need to pour everything I have into it. It is so important. And without it, humanity will perish or the world will end or other people will be sad or other people will be struggling and other people will be suffering. And it will be my fault, my fault that they are feeling this way. And in this, there's that guilt once again, that guilt that is the hallmark of the healer archetype. And it is also a kind of megalomania. And in a, a sense, a denying of one's personal humanity, which is why a lot of empaths believe they are almost alien in their nature. They are denying their own humanity and their own needs and everything that is human about them, like wanting to be loved or wanting relationships or wanting friendship, wanting to have a place to stay, a place to feel at home or a place in society. And uh, denying everything about your, this about yourself and uh, feeling kind of like you are a divine creature that doesn't have these needs. Like, the more you deny it, the more you start forgetting about it. It becomes unconscious, it becomes repressed. And you start assuming that you don't actually have these needs. I don't actually need anything. I actually am completely fine the way I am. I'm actually uh, completely fine pouring myself into other people. But at the same time, empaths struggle a lot with attracting narcissists and feeling used and feeling manipulated. Yeah, a lot of empaths um, attract and become targets for narcissists. And the reason for this is that the narcissist searches for people that can give them something. And there is no type that can give more than the healer. The healer can, can devote their completely, complete life to giving something to you, giving you what you need. Whenever you feel sad, whenever you feel angry, whenever you feel upset, the healer is there and they try to suit you, they try to take care of you, they try to give you what you need. And they try to help you and they try to... Uh, make sure that you will be good and that you will be happy and that you will be content. But the narcissist is also an attractive target for empaths because the narcissist requires a lot. And uh, that means they stand out more. You feel their experiences more than you feel other people. You feel their needs more than you feel other people's needs because they are <laughs> constantly reminding you that what they need. They're constantly telling you what they need. The narcissist is able to tell everyone else what they want, but unable to claim this for themselves. The healer is able to give everyone what everyone else wants, but unable to stand up for their own needs. And you can see how they mirror each other. So you can see how they are drawn to each other. So you can see this whole, tri uh, this whole circle and how terrible it is for both involved. And uh, at the same time, perhaps they are meant to be teachers for one another, because often... Empaths that have had experiences with narcissists learn this very important issue, this very important lesson of asserting their own needs and validating their own individuality. Eventually, the healer comes to a point where they have to recognize that they have needs of their own. They have to recognize that there is something they want, something in them that is selfish, but at the same time something within them that is okay. That it is okay to want someone or to need something or to ask for something. If you need help, if you feel bad, to say to other people, I feel bad, I feel sad, I feel uh, like I'm not happy. And to tell other people what it is you want. To avoid this frustration and this anger of not getting anything from other people and feeling used and feeling manipulated and feeling misled. To feeling like you're the only one that gives, the only one that cares. And other, uh, that other people don't care and that other people don't want to give you anything. Empaths are often surprised when they start telling other people what they want and find that other people listen, that other people are actually going to care, that other people are actually going to help. Every time uh, when I was stuck in the empath conundrum, when I would tell other people I needed something, they would show up and they would help me and they would be there for me. And I was like, what? you are and that's kind of took away from that feeling of being special you know when I was a kid I feel like I was stuck in this for a long time I was uh, completely focused on other people to the point of invalidating everything inside me that was human you know I was so focused on other people and helping other people on saving the world and saving the planet and I was so focused on constantly reading other people as a kid as a 12 year old I was studying up on New Age, on Reiki, on chakras, on astrology, and on uh, auras. And I would constantly spend my time trying to understand other people, trying to listen to them, trying to hear them out, trying to learn more about them. But then 
there was so little I knew about myself and so little I recognized in myself. And that is in part why I, as a 21-year-old, became burnt out already at 21, you know. I was so... I didn't even think that I had boundaries. I didn't even think that there were limits to my energy and to what I had to offer. I thought that I could just give on, keep on giving endlessly and that it would have to work out and that it, I would just have to keep pushing myself. No matter how bad I felt pouring myself into other people, I felt and I kept pushing myself to give more. The answer was like, oh, you're simply not giving enough. Oh, you're simply not doing enough. Every time I felt bad about something, I thought... It was because I wasn't doing enough, I wasn't helping enough people. And then I would think more about other people, and I would think more about how I could help other people. And, uh, oh, yeah, it was such a struggle to get over, and I don't know if I'm completely over it yet, but I feel at least like I have learned something important. And in this, become more self-affirming. And in this, I feel less of a need to feel special and less of a need to feel like I am different than other people or that I have some kind of divine gift. I start to recognize that I'm actually more human than I think. And in this, I can be a little surprised. And I'm like, oh, I'm actually human. Oh, I actually want things. And it's like developing and realizing and listening to my own voice of what I wanted. That was so difficult. It was also that... Uh, just recognizing two other important things that I had in myself. Feeling judging and intuitive judging, recognizing my own need for independence and my own ability to go my own way. It was also kind of what propelled me to start up on YouTube and it was what helped me uh, speak out to other people and to start sharing my own thoughts, my own theories to the world. Before then, I think I was so focused on healing others and of helping others and uh, I never had the time to actually develop any of these projects or ideas. So that kind of gave me a rush and that gave me a kick as well. It helped me uh, really take a step forward and it made me feel a lot more self-actualized. Not that I think I'm complete in any ways, but that it made me feel a lot more true to myself and a lot more honest when dealing with other people. Because I was doing what I love and uh, yeah, I wasn't being somebody better than anyone else. I wasn't listening to you or helping you because I thought I was better than you. But I was doing it because I loved to do it and because I thought it was cool and because I gained when dealing with other people. Because I was doing what I love and uh, yeah, I wasn't being somebody better than anyone else. I wasn't listening to you or helping you because I thought I was better than you. But I was doing it because I loved to do it and because I thought it was cool and because it gave me something. And uh, that made me feel, and it made a lot of people feel a lot better too. I, it was like it took away from the guilt of other people. Other people would feel guilty at times dealing with uh, me because it was like uh, I was so focused on them and what they were feeling and what they were doing. I would always put things on them. So what are you feeling? What are you doing? And I would never talk about myself. And uh, other people would feel guilty like uh, they didn't see me, like I would, they were constantly taking from me. And that would make all the good people kind of disappear from my life. Like the people that were good, that wanted to help me and that wanted to listen to me and that wanted to support me. They didn't uh, really want to deal with me because it was like they thought uh, they felt so guilty around me. Where the people that were bad, that wanted something from me, they would always keep coming to me for more. You know, that's, uh, And I think that's something a lot of empaths deal with. Uh, <laughs> attracting the wrong people by creating the wrong... Uh, situation and creating the wrong experience. And that is also why I felt such a need to address this whole empath issue. Why I felt so bad whenever I see people post videos about INFJs as empaths and videos that paint INFJs that somehow, as somehow more rare or somehow more special than everyone else. That uh, almost seek to rationalize uh, being a martyr as something positive when it is not. Uh, <laughs> And that uh, doesn't realize and doesn't hear its own voice. And at the same time, I know I can't completely change that. I can't do anything about it. Like, because other people are at that level. That's where they are. And that's what they need right now. The more you feel bad about yourself, the more you need to feel like you're special. That's just the self-comfort story. That's the comfort blanket. And... Uh, so I wonder, what do we do with this comfort blanket? Blanket. What do we do with it? Because the risk is we cling on to it too hard and we alienate ourselves from others. And we, we really 
make ourselves into martyrs. We really make ourselves suffer so much more than we should. And we make everyone else around us suffer too, you know. I don't know. It's a struggle. It's a big conundrum. And I want to do something about it. I want empaths to think and to watch this video or to start discussing their own needs and their own wishes. And I want you to start setting your own boundaries. And I want you to release yourself from the comfort blanket that is uh, feeling special. And I want you to see how special everyone is around you, how special everyone is and everyone's gifts and what everyone has. And I want you to recognize that there is something positive about selfishness if it is combined with empathy towards yourself and towards other people. So that is what I have to say about the empath archetype. Feel free to let me know what you think. And if you like this video, share it with others. Thank you for watching.